Hello, good evening. There is no electricity here in my house, so I will be with the camera off. Uh, and we are going to wait two or three minutes for the rest of the class. Hey everybody, welcome to the class. It's a pleasure to be with you tonight. There is no electricity here at my house and I hope the battery of the computer is good enough. So let's see how it goes. Um, all right, we're gonna start with the platform just to check. Okay, uh, for first of all, everybody has access to the platform, right? Or is there anybody that still don't have access to the, pla to the platform? Okay, so this is the class of tonight, and this is the the exercise for tonight. Uh, maybe you know already that when you have this kind of exercises, you need to be very careful, okay? So this exercise says, type sentences using the relative pronoun who, add the missing words and conjugate the verb correctly. And then, uh, well, you have to type the whole sentence, uh, remember that if you have an extra space, for example, it's not going to take the answer. So this kind of exercise sometimes are complicated. If uh, you have problems with that one, just chat with me tomorrow and we can check into that, one, all right? Good. So right now what we are going to do is to check the attendance. Let's see. Holman, Saul, Giron, Sanchez. Present. Good. Jose Alberto Baños Hernández. Jamie Raquel Escobar Alfaro. Present. Good. Cara Lorena Leiva Contreras. Vanessa Noemi Reyes Lemos. Present, teacher. Good. 
Hector Francisco Morales Rico. Present teacher. Christian Alexander Arevalo Delgado. Present teacher. Good. Kenia Cecilia Ruiz Morán. Daniel Antonio Luna. Manuel Antonio Escamilla Jurado. Fátima Denise Aguilar Márquez. Iván Petrovich Guzmán Aquino. Present. Good. Lucy Natalie Juárez de Ramírez. Present. Present. Good. Erika Yasmín Martínez Carpio. Present. Good. Samantha Marisol Campos Flamenco. Zulma Janet Ramírez Ábalos. Present. Good. Herman Alexander Durán Linares. Present. Good. Nelson Antonio Rodas Rosales. Present. Good. Daniel Arquímedes Florentino García. Present. Good. Osvin Alexis Flores Hernández. Present. Good. David Alexander Rodríguez Sánchez. Present teacher. Very good. Perfect. Okay. Present. Oh, Carla Lorena. Okay. Got you here. Nice. Good. So I have a question for you. Was it raining there in your house I mean, where you live? Everybody? It's raining in San Miguel. In San Miguel, it's raining. Imagine. What about the rest of the people? A it half hour ago. Oh, sorry. Hmm. Go ahead. Uh, okay, thank you. Um, a half hours ago, here is, is a lot, a lot raining, but no yet. I see. Well, I was asking you because here in Santa Ana, I mean, where I live at least, it was raining very, very hard, very hard. I mean, there is no electricity where I am, so I, I believe that we need to be careful these days. If you are driving home, uh, at night sometimes we need to be careful because it's, it's dangerous, right? To be outside sometimes. Good. So we're going to start with a little bit of grammar tonight. That is very good. So the class of tonight says adjective clauses with who. So that's what we're going to check. Let me just get this. Okay, so we're going to go uh, slowly so we can check into uh, all the things, okay? Uh, let's see. Um, Hector Francisco Morales, could you please read this little paragraph? Yes, of course, teacher. Um, an adjective clause, also called a relative clause, uh, is a depend clause that modifies a noun or pronoun. It's tell which one or what kind adjective clause almost almost always come right uh, after the nouns they modify okay perfect so let's check an adjective clause also called relative clause is a dependent clause that modifies a noun or pronoun so this is the first part this is very important. so i don't know if you check clauses before but this is a clause. I mean, an adjective clause that is also, it has two names. That is the first part. You can say an adjective clause or you can say a relative clause, okay? So it's a dependent clause that modifies a noun or pronoun. It tells which one or what kind. So that's why it expresses which one is the person that is doing the action or something like that, or what kind of person or what kind of subject you have. And then it says adjective clauses almost always come right after the nouns they modify. So this is like the introduction to a clause. Okay. So a clause, uh, maybe you know that already, uh, is like yeah. two parts of a sentence, 
there are two sentences together and uh, they create just one sentence that will be it okay um do you have any questions before we continue any word any word that you want to, to check in this paragraph okay very good so let's continue uh let's see daniel archimedes could you please read this one okay using dependent clause is is a way of combining sentences combining daniel combining sentence daniel was late again today plus daniel sits next to me in in english Daniel, who was late again today, sits next to me in English. Very good. So this is what we're going to check today. So these are dependent clauses. And, and there are two sentences, two different sentences that when we put them together, it's going to be just one sentence, one clause. So all the clauses are like this, are going to be like, two sentences together, okay? That will be there. What well, we need to check into that one. So, uh, for example, Daniel was late again today. That is a sentence, a separate sentence. The other one says, Daniel sits next to me in English. It's another idea, another sentence. And then we put them together with a who clause. So, Daniel, and this is very important, comma, okay? Daniel, comma, who was late again today. So you can see that that is the clause. We're going to set who there. And then comma, the second comma is important because it's the, the one that separates the two ideas, the two sentences. I mean, there are two sentences in the same, but this is where you are going to differentiate one and the other one. So Daniel, who was late again today, comma, sits next to me, in English. So that is the construction of a clause. So two sentences, and then we put together the sentences, and that is called a clause. Okay, do you have a question or do you have any word or pronunciation thing here in this slide? Uh, teacher, I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, but you can say to Daniel, was late again today. Mm, in this case, it's necessary who. Who, who okay. is important. Yeah, who is important in this case. If you do it that way, it's not going to be correct. Okay. Okay, so that sure. is the important. Go ahead. In this case, who is not for uh, make a question. Is is In this case, uh, I understand is for uh, affirmative, uh, uh, say Daniel, uh, it's a people uh, who come late uh, late every day. I I think is is a the uh, for for uh, say a person. I don't know if you understand me. Uh, definitely but yes. I, I I I remember who is for w uh, w question or oh, say who is the people um who is the, I don't know. But in this case, it's not for my question. It's affirmative. And yeah, actually, you are right. This this one, this who is not for question. This is uh, to describe. So what you are doing, this is a description. Daniel, and then who was late again today. That is a description. So who is Daniel? Uh, the guy who came late today. And the rest is the like. I got it. Thank you, teacher. Exactly. So it's going to be six next to me in English. That is something that you want to say, but you want to describe who is that person. Who is Daniel? So imagine that I say, who is the one that sits next to you in English? Oh, Daniel. Daniel, who, the one who came late tonight, today, he is the one that sits next to me in English. So it's a description, that part. Good. Anyways, we have more examples and a little bit more of... Uh, Describing of this one. So uh, this one is going to be for, let me just check. Uh, 
Nelson Antonio, could you please read this one? Can you hear me? I can hear you right now, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry, it's start raining here. Oh my goodness, be careful of that. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, okay. With relative pronoun, an adjective clause generally begins, begins with a relative pronoun. Begins, thank you, teacher. That which, who, whom, whose, that connects the clause to the noun or pronoun it modifies. The relative pronoun shows the relationship between the clause and the antecedent. Perfect. So this is another way for you to check that one. Relative uh, pronouns. So uh, an adjective clause, that, that's what we're checking today. An adjective clause generally, not always, but generally begins with a relative pronoun. So the first question that I have for you is what is begins? It's like start. Very good. It's like at the at the initial part of the sentence, right? So uh, an adjective clause generally begins with a relative pronoun. What are the relative pronouns? That, which, who, whom, and whose. So that is very general. So for example, uh, uh, the man the man dressed in, in white shirt is the one that came late tonight, for example. And that is in the middle, putting together all the things, the two sentences. But this is something that we're going to check later on, which is like when you are saying who did something, like which uh, which is the one that, and something like that. And who is the one that we're checking on now? So it's not for asking question, but it's for you to describe. Whom? Anybody knows what is whom? Okay, I will explain you. Whom is very similar to who. The difference is that who is the subject, is the person who does the action. So like in the questions, right? Who cooked tonight the dinner? So who is the subject, the person that cooked the dinner? But if you say whom, is the other way around. Whom is uh, the person that receives the action? Okay. For example, we can say, uh, uh, for whom is this, uh, this computer? For whom is this computer delivered tonight? So who is going to receive? He's going to receive this one. It's not who is delivering the computer, but he's going to receive. So that is the main difference between who and whom. Who is the subject, is the person who does the action. And whom is the person that receives, is the object of the action, is who receives the action, okay? We're going to check that more in the future. Tonight is going to be the most important who. But anyways, it's important to check, right? The other one is whose. Does anybody know what is whose? Okay, of course. I'm sorry, go ahead. No teacher. Okay. Uh, that's why we're here to learn. That's very good. So whose is possessive. So for example, when I say, whose pencil is this? I'm asking who is the owner of the pencil. We don't say who is the owner of the pencil. No, we say whose pencil is this? Whose book is this? Whose car is this? It's very simple. It's just like that. It's possessive for who. Who is the owner? That will be it. Teacher, can you repeat the, the difference between who and whom? Ah, uh, yeah. Who? is the subject of the sentence. So who refers 
to the person that does the action. Okay, so for example, when we say who delivers the computer, so we're asking who is the person that is going to go and take the computer to a place to deliver something. But if we say whom is the receptor of the computer, for example, uh, so that is the object. And the object means that is the one who receives the action. Okay. It's like when we say in Spanish, para quien. Para quien es eso. Who is a quien. Quien hace algo. But whom is para quien. Para quien es eso. Whom. That will be. Yeah. Thank you. Very good. So that connects the clause to the noun or pronoun it modifies. So it's going to be connected to the one that modifies. That is very simple. And then it says the relative pronoun shows the relationship between the clause and the antecedent. So uh, remember that this is going to be like for two sentences. Two sentences are going to put together, right? And who, that's why it's very important to use in this case who, or any relative pronoun like that, which, who, who, whose. By now, as I was telling you, we're going to check only who, but this is like the general explanation for that one. Uh, do you have any questions for this by now? Teacher, uh, having a question. Go ahead. What is the translation the, the, the relative pronoun was? Uh, the quien es. De quien es. Yeah, quien es el dueño, whose. Como cuando decimos de quien es este lápiz, en vez de decir de quien es, decimos whose, en una sola palabra. Whose pencil is this? Oh, okay. That is it. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other question? Clear as of chat. Uh, go ahead. <clears throat> I'm sorry, can you give me or give us um, an example about how to use whose, whom, and who? Because for to be honest, I'm a little bit lost. Okay, it's very easy. Who is who is your brother? So that is the most common, right? I believe that you are very familiar with who. Whom, it will be something like, for whom is the hamburger? So who is going to receive the hamburger? I bring some hamburgers. Who wants to eat the hamburger? Who pay for the hamburger? So for whom we can say that? For whom? Or whom hamburgers are these? So who are going to receive that? And whose is like that one? Whose car is this? Whose computer is this? I don't need that clear. I can do it also in Spanish. So for example, we can say, who is your brother? ¿Quién es tu hermano? ¿Quién es? Quiere decir que es el sujeto. Él es, él come, él salta. Él está haciendo la acción. Whom, it will be like, whom hamburgers are these? ¿Para quién son las hamburguesas? ¿Quién las va a recibir? ¿Quién se las va a comer? Yo las traigo, pero no son mías. Yo estoy trayéndolas, yo hago la acción. ¿Verdad? Yo estoy haciendo la acción, pero yo no me la voy a comer. Yo las traigo a alguien. Esa persona va a recibir esa acción. Yo traigo un delivery y es para alguien más. Esa persona va a recibir la opción. En este caso, la japonesa. Y whose, creo yo que es bastante fácil. Whose car is this? ¿De quién es este carro? Whose computer is this? ¿De quién es esta computadora? Is a little bit more clear? Yeah, yeah, yeah. For example, that, that is a... ¿Qué? Eh? Yeah, it's going to be the same. So, for example, uh, you can say, I mean, we are not going to check that one yet, but I can tell you a, a few examples. So for example, uh, uh, who is the man that is paying for the hamburgers? So who is the man is a sentence. It's paying for the hamburgers is another sentence. And we put that together with that. Who is the man that is paying for the hamburgers? So we can say that one. Mm -hmm. And it's also adjective okay. because it's also described. Okay. Teacher. Sure. Mm -hmm. Yep. But what? Whom and whose 
it's only for question or I can say it's a it, uh, uh, last last uh, uh, paper in the presentation anterior or say in the page in the in the, in the, in the slide before who uh -huh. is for affirmative the slide before a uh hand -huh, slide before who is for affirmative we say uh, Santa Claus who is the person uh, travel uh, toys I think but home or who's it's only for me question. Uh, actually, no. 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 Uh, yeah, we can go back into that one. Okay. So, who, all, all these words, I mean, which, who, whom, and whose, you can use it to ask questions or you can use it in this way. Uh, these are the clauses. You can use it inside of a clause. So, uh, it's going to be like a description, as I was telling you. So, quizás lo vamos a explicar en español para que vean. Who, mm -hmm. ustedes saben que todas las palabras que están aquí, uh, todas estas palabras, which, who, whom, whose, son para preguntar. Y también, mm -hmm. a eso es lo que estamos viendo. Lo nuevo que estamos viendo ahora es que también utilizamos para cláusulas. Ya en la cláusula ya no es una. Mm -hmm. Es como esta. O sea, esta es la, no sé, creo que no habían visto cláusulas antes, según estoy, estoy chequeando. ¿verdad? The, teacher, what, what is the concept of the clauses? I don't, la, I don't, I don't clear, I don't clear. Es lo que está acá, lo que está aquí. Vaya, se lo voy a explicar en español. Tengo dos oraciones. Daniel llegó tarde otra vez hoy. Y la otra dice, Daniel se sienta junto a mí en inglés. Son dos oraciones separadas. La cláusula lo que hace es que las pone juntas. Daniel, quien llegó tarde ahora, se sienta junto a mí en inglés. Pero la, el truco aquí es que en la primera parte lo que estoy haciendo con el who, estoy describiendo quién es Daniel. Uh -huh. Y en la segunda estoy diciendo uh -huh. lo que quiero decir. Una cláusula, una parte de la cláusula es dependiente y la otra es independiente. No hemos visto eso todavía pero lo que es una cláusula es esto, ya son oraciones más complejas, ya no es una sola oración como quien dice uh, a mí uh -huh. me gusta la pizza, no, yo puedo decir a mí me gusta la pizza que hacen allá, por... ya son oraciones más complejas esas son cláusulas uh -huh. una cláusula son dos oraciones juntas, que representan una misma idea uh -huh. is, okay. is it clear? Yes, yes. Sure. Like, like horchata. Like horchata. <laughs> Very good. Eh, no, esta parte es importante, por eso a veces pues me tuve el tiempo de explicarlo en español para que quede bien claro. Porque, I mean, uh, si no entendemos el inglés, no lo podemos pensar, ¿verdad? Mm -hmm. hay, hay partes, yo entiendo que hay partes que... Esto sí lo usamos en español. Esto, así como lo, así como lo estamos diciendo ahí, Daniel, quien llegó tarde hoy se sienta junto a mí. Es exactamente con español, pero más adelante vamos a ver unas cosas, o bueno, se las van a ver en el avanzado o los demás, van a ver unas cosas que en español no ¿Eh? tienen sentido, pero así se usa en inglés. Entonces, ahí no tenemos que empezar ya a, a ver el inglés de otra manera. Entonces, esta sí, las cláusulas se ocupan en español, se llaman de una manera diferente, ¿verdad? pero se utilizan, pero hay unas partes más adelante que ya son netamente ¿verdad? y si nosotros no las utilizamos bien, cuando ya lleguen allá en Nueva York, no le van a entender así que, lo que me dijo ¿verdad? so, that's why it's been. pero sí me gusta que me pregunten o sea, pregúntenme, eso es bien importante que entendamos we need to understand first so we can practice that is very very ok, teacher sí, go ahead uh... I don't know, but uh, I I will I try. Okay. I can say uh, Daniel, who not understand the class, is necessary uh, reforce. Uh, is possible? Is is good? Who? Yeah. Como yeah. para decir Daniel para quien no entiende, o, o poder decir who not understand the class. I will um, uh, say class and another uh, uh, in Saturday. It's not yeah. question; it's affirmative. I think. 
Exactly. That is that is the idea. The idea is that you are going to put together two ideas, two sentences, and express just one idea. The first one is to describe. Describe who is that person, right? And then what you want to do. So what you say is, mm -hmm. is correct. I mean, you can say, Daniel, who didn't understand the class, comma. The comma is very important. Comma. He needs to uh, needs to practice on Saturday more English or anything like that. One. So you are explaining okay. on the first part and then saying on the second part what is going to happen. Okay. Very good. Uh, uh -huh. uh, it's necessary uh, uh, the comma in the in the in the sentences when I use the who or who and yeah. Todas las cláusulas dependiendo, mire, más adelante vamos a ver esto, no lo vamos a ver todavía, pero las cláusulas como son dos oraciones, ¿verdad? Hay algunas cláusulas que yo les puedo cambiar el orden. Dependiendo qué va primero, no lleva coma. Hay algunas que llevan coma o llevan punto, ¿verdad? No lo vamos a ver ahorita, pero esta cláusula como la estamos viendo aquí ahorita, si yo no le pongo la coma, está en coma. Uh -huh. It's not coma. La primera, Daniel coma, esa puede variar. Porque puede ser que yo no diga Daniel, sino que diga the man who was late again today y ahí no lleva coma. En cambio, ahí en Daniel sí, porque estoy diciendo Daniel who was late again today. O sea, hay una pausa porque cambia de idea dentro de la conversación. Pero si yo digo the man who was late again today, ahí ya no lleva esa coma. Esa no es necesaria. La segunda sí. Esa es parte mm -hmm. de la cláusula. So if you mm -hmm. don't use the coma, Everything is incorrect. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank but you. That comma is important. Very good. Okay. Any other question, my friends? I'm sorry, but I think it's a little bit tricky, this, <laughs> these clouds. I'm oh. sorry. Uh, okay. Well, uh, for me, I, I got it when you use who, because you are talking about the person. Mm -hmm. I got it, but whom, whose I got, I think I got the idea, for example, could be who's this, uh, whose is this chair for, for example, mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm ground, but whom, uh, to be honest, I don't understand it yet, whom, I don't understand it, whose, I think I got the idea, and who, I use it, I think I use it, but home for to be honest, I didn't get it yet. <laughs> Mire, es, es bien fácil, la verdad. Vaya, es como cuando decimos, le voy a poner un ejemplo diferente. Yo creo que lo primero que tenemos que entender es qué es sujeto y qué es objeto de la oración. Lo vamos a hacer con otras palabras. They. They es sujeto. Ellos. Them. Them es ellos pero ya no es sujeto, es objeto. Es quien recibe la acción. Te voy a poner un ejemplo con they y con them. They are cooking pizza. Ellos están cocinando pizza. Ellas están haciendo la pizza. So, si digo, imagínese esta. They are cooking pizza for them. Ahí estoy usando los dos. Pero el primer they... Es el sujeto siempre, quien está haciendo la pizza. They are cooking pizza for them, para ellos. Ellos van a recibir la pizza, van a recibir la acción. Exactamente eso es who y whom. Who es quien hace la acción y whom es el objeto, quien recibe la acción. Para todos los sujetos hay objetos, porque para I está mí. O sea, yo digo I, I will go to the, to the party. O yo puedo decir, she will go to the party with me. Ese with me es objeto. Ella va a ir conmigo. Yo recibo la acción. Lo mismo pasa con you. Lo mismo pasa con he. Para he, por ejemplo, es him. He es el sujeto. Him es el objeto de la oración. Entonces, el sujeto siempre va en las oraciones. El objeto va a depender de lo que usted quiere decir. Si usted quiere decir quién va a recibir la acción, usted puede decir... Uh, my brother is uh, my brother is bringing a computer for him. But ese for him es quien recibe la acción. 
que es traer la computadora. Idéntico aquí, who, entonces yo lo ocupo como sujeto. Who is, um, puedo decir, who is cooking pizza. Okay. O puedo decir, uh, for whom are you cooking pizza. ¿Para quién la están cocinando? O sea, no quién, yo no quiero saber quién la está cocinando, sino para quién es la pizza, para quién es la acción. Eso es who y whom. No sé si queda claro esto. Es. It's kind of possessive. No, el posesivo es whose, para, de quién es. Entonces, whose es el posesivo. ¿De quién es esto? Ah, de él. Estoy preguntando de quién es. Todo eso, de quién es, es whose. Whom, lo que pasa es que nosotros lo usamos en español, pero no sabemos qué parte son. Nosotros hablamos, ¿verdad? Y, y decimos, ¿y para quién es este, esto que trajeron? Ese para quién es, ese es whom, quien recibe la acción. O sea, hay una acción, una posesión en este caso, o alguien que cocina, alguien que le lleva algo. Entonces, vale, le voy a poner otra vez el ejemplo. They are cooking pizza for them. Ahí estoy usando los dos. They sujeto, quien hace la acción, ellos están cocinando la pizza ¿para quién es la pizza? esa es whom, ¿para quién es? ¿quién es el que recibe? no siempre es una posición, ¿para quién es el delivery? ¿para quién es el castigo? por ejemplo ya no es una posición ¿para quién es? ¿quién va a recibir ese castigo? lo va a recibir esa persona pero yo estoy en whom, yo estoy preguntando ¿quién es el que va a recibir esa acción. ¿Quién va a recibir el castigo? ¿Quién va a recibir? ¿Quién es el, el culpable? ¿Quién, a quién, algo por el estilo. ¿verdad? En cambio, who es quien hace la acción. Entonces, es igualito que en español, idéntico. Lo que pasa es que nosotros no nos paramos a pensar, bueno, y este sujeto es objeto. Lo usamos y ya. ¿verdad? Lo mismo pasa con who. Lo usamos en the set. No sé si queda un poco más claro. I think I'm on the way. I'm sorry, I can hear this. It won't cut off. Hello? Sorry? Could, could you, you repeat? I understand that who is quien. Yes. And who is para quien. Exactly. Okay. That's it. In a few words, that is only. The only thing is that. Okay, let's continue. Let me just check. En whose? De quien? De quien es. Exactly. Okay. That is it. It's very simple. Okay, very good. Let's see. Uh, uh, Jamie, Raquel, could you please read this one? Sure. Dan. Yeah who was late again tonight today six sits next to me in english and then is equal daniel and who equal daniel so the the pen clause means that daniel was late again to, today who is replacing daniel in the second clause and relative to the subject or the independence clause. Okay, so that is like the explanation for the previous slide. Daniel, who was late again today, sits next to me in English. So that is the example, right? So the antecedent is Daniel. I want to know who I'm talking about. So comma, and then who is replacing Daniel? That is the dependent clause. No vamos a ver esto muy así a a fondo, pero sí tienen que recordar que las cláusulas son dos partes. Una es dependiente y una es independiente. Como cuando decimos, si llueve, voy a ir a comer pizza. Entonces, la cláusula, la cláusula eh, independiente es si llueve. Y la cláusula dependiente es voy a ir a comer pizza. Si llueve, si no llueve, no voy. Something like that. Pero eso no lo vamos a ver muy, muy a fondo ahorita, porque lo vamos a ver más allá. Okay, so the relative, let me just check who's going to read this one. Um, Fatima, Denise, could you please read this one? The relative pronoun 
as a grammatical function in the sentence. Daniel, who, who was late again today, sit next to me in English. Who is the subject of the dependent clause? That is it, it's very easy. So who in this sentence is the subject? So it's the same that I was telling you before. For example, if we change Daniel, if we change the man with the red shirt who was late again today, that will be the subject, okay? That is it. Everything there is going to be the subject of the, of the whole clause, okay? That is kind of it. Let's see who's going to read this one. Osvin Alexander. Oh, Alexis, I'm sorry. Osvin Alexis. Will you please read this part? Adjective clauses are entire phrases that function as an adjective. Uh, adjective. 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 See? Adjective. See who is a subject pronouns. Adjective clauses that open with who will modify the subject. Okay, so that is it. Adjective clauses are entire phrases that function as an adjective because it's a description. Who are the men that came late today? Since who is a subject pronoun, adjective classes that open with who will modify the subject. So that is the only thing. Uh, but mo the most important is the structure. Okay, the structure is very important. But just remember that who uh, is, is an adjective, is describing. The first part, the part that has who, is describing who is that person. Okay, the man who... Uh, speaks in English all the time, bring me a piece of cake, for example. So uh, that would be a very good example of that. And here there are some other examples, so you check into that one, okay? So, I looked for the person who forgot their heart. Oh, this is an interesting one, okay? So as you can see in this one, there is no comma. Ah, this is a good one. Entonces, aquí se ve bien cómo van las dos cláusulas. La primera es, I look for the person. La primera. La segunda es, who forgot their heart. So, I look for the person who forgot their heart. Yo no digo aquí, aquí el sujeto es, the person who forgot their heart. La persona que olvidó su sombrero. Ese es el sujeto. No es Daniel, no es un nombre propio. No es él, no es ella. A veces el sujeto puede ser algo complejo como eso. El hombre parado allá con camisa cuadriculada y un sombrero en la mano. Todo eso puede ser un sujeto. So, the important part here is that if you use who, uh, if you use the clause with who, o sea, aquí hay dos cláusulas. La primera es la independiente y la segunda who es la, la cláusula con, la, con el subject, con who. Si yo ocupo who después, no lleva coma. Es lo que les decía anteriormente. La otra también es así. He thanked the person who helped him. Tenemos dos ideas. Él le agradeció a una persona. Él le ayudó. Y ya cuando la ponemos juntos sería, él le agradeció a la persona quien le ayudó. Ese quien ya no está preguntando. Él le agradeció a la persona quien le ayudó. So, he thanked the person who helped him. Y como usamos la cláusula who, al final, no lleva coma. He wants to learn from someone who is knowledgeable. So, again, two sentences. He wants to learn from someone is the first one. Uh, and somebody that is knowledgeable is the second. If we put that together, he wants to learn from someone who is knowledgeable. Él quiere aprender de alguien que o quien es conocedor, que conoce mucho. ¿Ok? Y la última ya la dije. Daniel, who was late, had to participate more in class. Ah, ok, this is a different one. Daniel, who was late, had to participate more in class. Daniel, quien estuvo tarde, tiene que participar más en clase. ¿Ok? So, entonces, la idea de las cláusulas, para ir terminando esta parte, eh, lo vamos a ver también en el libro porque aquí está. Es eso, unir dos, 
ideas. La que lleva who es la descripción. Y la otra parte es lo que quiero decir. So, uh, he wants to learn from someone who is knowledgeable. That is it. He thanked the person who helped him. And so, do you have any questions with these examples? Teacher. Yep. Uh, can you repeat the word knowledge? No. The pronunciation is knowledgeable. Knowledgeable. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay, so let's continue then. Oh, this is for tomorrow. So let's continue with the book. So yesterday we were checking about the book, right? So it says, uh, uh, we were checking about this conversation. I hate to tell you this, Tom, but our sales were down again last month. Uh, down again, Robert? Yes. Even after implementing the new changes, people are shopping at our competition, Sagan's Furniture Store. Unbelievable. Things there are too expensive. I'll evaluate our current plan, implement a new advertising campaign, and monitor our front sale assistance too, so they do a better job that may help. Yes, I wanted to tell you about that. Your current advertising campaign is a mess. I'm sorry to hear that. I thought it would make ourselves go up. Well, organize things better and get results this month or you'll get demoted. So as you remember, we were checking that conversation yesterday, right? So before we continue, do you have any questions about that? No questions. Okay, so Sir, what we're... Just, uh, excuse me. Um, the, the... What is the... Is, is, what is the meaning go out? Uh, go up. Yeah, it means that to increase. Uh, I thought that that would make ourselves go up. It means that I believe that with this strategy, the sales were going to increase. It's going to be more. Mm -hmm. It's similar. I increase. Increase, yeah. Okay. Very good. So let me just check. We're going to do the exercise below. It says pair work. Discuss the answers to the questions below. So this is according to the conversation. So number one, it says, what are three of Tom's responsibilities as a manager? Huh. Tell me what are three of Tom's responsibilities as a manager? According to the conversation. Make the advertising campaign. Sorry? Make the advertising campaign. Very good. To make the advertising campaign. One. Another one. A contract. Or... How do you say employer teacher? Uh, to to hire, you can say hire. Or oh, hire a new person or people. Okay, yeah, to hire a new person or something like that. Uh, any other that you can see there in the conversation? Evaluate the current plan. To evaluate the current plan, very good. Question number two, it says, what does Robert mean by organizing things better? What do you believe when he says organize things better? Maybe adjust the, the plan uh, to do the things different. Very good, to adjust the plan, to make things different. So 
that it will be so because it's not working right something is not working so very good so the other one number four says match the terms with their corresponding definition so i'm going to give you a few uh, minutes so you can check into that one okay arranging production workforce training and resources to achieve goals or objectives uh, to check, supervise, watch, or keep track of the process, the process of putting a decision or plan into effect, reviewing and assessing the success of the goal, the plan, and the allocation of the employees and their resources, and process uh, that identifies the goals or abilities to be achieved and the strategies to achieve them. Do you have any questions on this part about a word? So, for example, arranging. Arranging. Uh -huh. arranging. <laughs> what is arranging, anybody? It's it, it's like organized. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like organized. Very good. So that will be it. Okay. Uh, let's see any other resources. What is resources? Resources. It's like the materials or the raw, raw materials that you need to mm -hmm. make something. Yeah, something like that one, like the materials. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that you material, are going to that. Material, money, time, whatever. Okay. So, uh, any other word? Let me check. Keep track. What is to keep track? Teacher, what what was the word? Yeah, the word is keep track. Keep nice. track is is it's like a, a register, uh, registrar. Register, yeah, very good. Nice. The other word, let me just check. Keep track. Uh, let me see. Um, assessing, what is assessing? Anybody knows? Is that a check? I'm sorry? It's like, like say check or check the Task. Something like that one, yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. Uh, let me see. Okay, let me check any other word. Allocation, teacher. Ah, very good, allocation. Anybody knows what is allocation? Give. I'm sorry? Give, give something. To give something, to put something, right? So that will be it. Um, the other one, let me check, is identify goals, objective. Achieve, what is to achieve? Reach something. Yeah, very good. To, to, to get an objective, right, a goal. Okay, so I'm going to give you maybe five minutes for you to finish the exercise, okay? Number one is implementing or something like that, okay? So I will give you just five minutes. Uh, keep on working on that one. Okay.
If you don't know a word, you can look for that one in the dictionary. Okay, did you finish? So, uh, what will be the number one? What do you think it will be the number one? The number one is organized. Everybody agrees on that one? Yes, teacher. Very good, organized. Number two, what will be the number two? Monitor. Monitor. Everybody agrees? Yes. Yes. Agree. yes. Very good. Perfect. Number three. What will be the number three? It's implement. 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 Very good. Number four. What will be number four? Evaluate. Okay. Very good. Evaluate. Evaluate. And number five, what would be number five? It's plan. Plan. Perfect. Plan. Nice. So, do you have any question before we continue? Okay, so let's move on. So, let's see the vocabulary. It says management building vocabulary. So it says, I'm going to read it and check the pronunciation of the words, okay? It says, the following are some of the responsibilities of a manager. Label the responsibilities using the right category. Organize, monitor, implement, evaluate, plan. So, and we see that in the chart. Set goals and objectives. Develop plans for promotions communicating plans to employees, discussing and reporting progress of a strategic plan, prepare staff training manuals, 
create an employee training program, develop an evaluation form to assess customer service, create disciplinary and termination processes, review employees' work in progress on a regular basis, keep track of what employees do. So, uh, do you have any questions on pronunciation? No questions. Form to as assess is the pronunciation. To assess. Assess. Yeah. Assess. Any other pronunciation question? No more. Okay. So uh, let's check some vocabulary. Set goals. Do you remember what is to set? I don't know. I don't remember. Set okay. is like to. It's, it's like uh, put it, put it. Yeah, to put together something, right? To get put ready. Together something uh -huh. very good to set goals is to to i mean to create in this case the goals right that you are going to have okay uh, develop what is to develop do you remember a great plan very good so go step by step right in creating the plan nice uh what is let me just check Uh, staff, do you remember what is staff? It's the person at that work. Is the, the, yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. The people that work in a company, right? Staff, nice. The other one says, let's see, access. What is to access? May our organization? Very good. Uh, uh -huh. Go ahead. It's similar, uh, similar evaluators. Very good. It's similar to evaluate. So, for example, you say the assessment, right? So, an assessment is like a test, an evaluation. Good. Let me check what other word. Disciplinary terms. Procedures. Uh -huh. We check already. Keep track. Okay. So, I'm going to give you a few minutes for you to check. And you are going to on the on the chart on the top, you are going to write, organize, monitor, implement, evaluate, or plan. Okay. I will give you a few minutes for you to do that one. Okay.
Okay, did you finish? Or do you need more time? More time. Very good. I will give you more time. No problem. Okay, did you finish or do you need more time? Okay, let's check that. So the first one says set goals and objectives and then develop plans for promotions. So uh, what is that? Organize, monitor, implement, evaluate, or plan. What do you think? I have organized. I have, but I, I'm not sure. Okay, organized. And the rest of the class, what do you think? I think it's plan. Plan. Very good. Everybody in the, the rest of the I class? Think, what? I think, I think it's, it's plan, plan too. too. Plan. Okay. Plan. Right. plan is the one for this. Yes. To set goals and objectives and develop plans for promotion, that is plan. The next one is communicating plans to employees, discussing and reporting progress of a strategic plan. So which one is that one? Implement. 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 Very good, implement. The next one says prepare a staff training manuals, create an employee training program. What is that? Organize. 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 Nice. The next one says develop an evaluation form to assess customer service and create disciplinary and termination procedures. What is that? Monitor. Monitors. Monitor. Very good. And the last one says review employees working changes on a regular basis and keep track of what employees do. What is that? Evaluate. Evaluate, very good. Perfect, nice, you are amazing. So what will be the, do you have any questions, I mean, before we continue? Teacher, uh, what, is the, what is the meaning of uh, the words uh, in the last paragraphs? Review employees working in progress on a regular basis. Regular basis, I, I don't know work. Uh, work. Yes, when you say a regular basis is something recurrent. That means that you do that every Monday uh, or every time at the end of the month or every quarter. So you have uh, a stipulated part. So you schedule that one. So you know that it's in a regular basis when you do that every other time. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Thank you. And any other question? Okay. So let's do the next exercise. Complete the blanks using the verbs from the box to describe the competencies of a manager. And we have develop, ensure, improve, 
identify and motivate. So I'm going to give you a few minutes for you to do this one, okay? Let's see how it goes. Thank you. What is met? A uh, met. Let me just check. The second one. Ah, okay. Met is the pass of meet. In this case, oh, deadline. Okay. Do you know what is a deadline? Yes, yes. Okay. So deadlines are met, meaning that where you have to finish something, right? Good. Okay, did you finish or do you need more time? Okay, so let's check together. Number one, what will be it? What do you think? Identify. Very good, you are very nice. Identify, identify problems. That is very important for a manager, right? Because when there are problems, you need to identify first the problems and of course then create solutions for that one. Number two, what do you think is that one? Ensure deadline are met. Very good. Ensure deadlines are met. So you need to be sure that if your boss or uh, if you say for June, June, we have to finish this part and then you have to. Finish that. Number three, what will be that one? Develop. 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 Everybody agrees on that? For me, it's improve. Improve. I improve. I have improved too. Okay, improve. That's the one. Improve staff performance. Nice. Number four, what would be that one? Motivate. 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 Very good. Motivate staff. And the last one? Develop, 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 create. Perfect. Develop creativity. That will be it. Nice. Do you have any questions on this exercise? Very good. Let's move on. Uh, the video, we're going to watch that tomorrow. By now, it says your turn. Write a short description of your job and then compare it to the responsibilities of your manager. We're not gonna do that one because we have to write other things. And then it says it's change of writing. Now we're not gonna do that one, no worries. So now we're gonna go to uh, second, the second uh, conversation. So in this one, it says, I will be able to describe different managerial styles. We're going to discuss that more deep tomorrow, but the conversation is a good one. So, and in the number one, it says, let's start. What is good management? How would you define managerial styles? We checked that yesterday, so we're not going to go into the book that. But we're going to check the conversation. It says, Tim and Jane are managers. 
Arab Telecommunications Company. They are discussing managerial styles. Take turns practicing the conversation with a partner. Okay, so I'm going to tell you and you check the pronunciation. Okay, if you have questions on pronunciations, let me know. Then we are going to practice with somebody and then we are going to check the vocabulary. Okay, so it says, team, did you hear? No one from Frank's team is getting the bonus this month. Is he the man who sits next to you for your lunch? Precisely, he is the advocate of Theory X who thinks every single employee is lazy. Well, his team won't go too far if he thinks like that. I personally prefer a more paternalistic style. I'm the one who makes decisions in the best interest of my team. Me too, but I hear John from Souls is having a lot of success with that lazy fear. What? You know, like John, the laid back manager who takes the backseat rule. Oh, I know. I heard he is the manager who lets his subordinates do whatever they want. Yeah, we may want to ask him how he does it. For sure. Okay, do you have pronunciation questions? Teacher. Yes. Could you repeat advocate, please? Yeah, advocate. Advocate. Thank you, teacher. Good. Any other pronunciation question? Teacher, how do you say laid back? Uh, laid 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 back. Laid back. Laid back, yeah. Good. Uh, do you have any other pronunciation question? Laissez-faire. Yeah, laissez-faire. That is French, actually. It's not English, but something good. Laissez-faire. Pre precisely. 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 Yeah. Thank you. Good. Any other pronunciation question? Paternalistic, this is the right. Ah, uh, yeah, let me look for that one. Ah, uh, yeah, paternalistic, yeah. Paternalistic. Yeah. Any other pronunciation questions? In the first... Uh... Paragraphs and conversation with James. Uh, team is a uh, get it, right? I'm sorry, uh, what is the word? Uh, get it in the first paragraphs. Uh, team and the Jane and managers. Team, uh, team is no one from France. Team is a uh, get it. Uh, it's going to be like getting the bonus, this one. No, 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 get, getting, the word is getting. Uh, getting. Okay, getting. Getting. Getting, getting, thank you. Getting, getting. Yeah. Okay, any other pronunciation question? In in that, uh, in that paragraph, it's correct to say here? Did you hear? Uh, did you hear? Yeah. Did you hear? Here. Yeah. Any other? Okay. So let's practice, my friends, uh, in, in couples, in pairs. We're going to do that one. So let's start with Ivan Petrovich. And Carla Lorena. Okay. Who who start? Uh you can start. Okay, thank you. Ting, did you hear? No one from Frank Ting as a get it. The bonus this month. Is he the man who sits next to you for lunch? 
precisely he's the advocate of precisely. theory. Precisely. Precisely. Of uh, precisely he's the advocate of theory X, who thinks every single employee is lazy. Well, his thing won't go too far if the things like that I personally prefer a more paternalistic style. I am the one who makes decision in the best interest of my team. Me too, but I hear John from sales is having a lot of success with a licif licifer, is right? Yeah, licifer, yeah. Licifer. The what? You know, like John, the laid back man manager who take the back seat role. Oh, I know. I hear he is the manager who lets his subordinates do whatever they want. Yeah, we may we may want to ask him how do you do things. That things. For sure. Very good, perfect. So now we're going to listen to Christian Alexander and David Alexander. Okay. okay. Thing, did you hear? No one from France thing is getting the bonus this month. Is he the man who sits next to you for lunch? Precisely. Precisely. He, precisely. He is the advocate of th Theory X, who thinks every single employee is lazy. Well, his team won't go too far if they think like that. I personally prefer a more paternal, paternalistic style. I am the one who makes the decision in the best interest of my team. Me too, but I hear John from sales is having a lot of success with the lazy fail. The what? You know, like John, the lay the layback manager who takes the backseat role. Oh, I know. I heard he is the manager, man, the manager who lets his subordinator do uh, whatever they want. Yeah. We may want to ask him how he does it. For sure. Very good. Perfect. Thank you. So let's listen now to uh, Nelson Antonio and Holman Saul. Thing, did you hear? No one from Frank Thing is getting the bonus this month. Is is <clears throat> is this the man who sits next to you for lunch? Precisely, he is the advocate of Theory X, who thinks every single employee is lazy. Well, his team won't go too far if if. If he thinks like that, I personally prefer a more paternalistic style. I am the one who makes decisions in the best interest of my team. Me too, but I hear John from sales, sales is having a lot of success with the lazy fail. The what? You know, like John, the light bag manager who takes the back seat role. Oh, I know. I heard he is the manager who lets his subordinate do whatever they want. Yeah. We may want to ask him how he does it. For sure. 
Very good, nice. Now we are going to listen to Daniel Arquímedes and Jamie Raquel. Okay. Ladies start. Okay. <laughs> Sin, do you hear? No one from France team is getting the bonus this month. Is he the man who sits next to George for lunch? Precisely. He is the advocate of advocate. theory why advocate of theory why who thinks every single employee is lazy. Well, his team won't go too far in the thing like that. I personally prefer a more paternalistic style. I'm the one who makes decisions in the best interests of my team. Me too, but I hear John from the Salad is having a lot of success with the laces fight. The what? You know, like John, the laid back manager who takes the back seat role. Oh, I know. I hear he is the manager who lets his subordinates do whatever they want. Yeah. We may want to ask him how he does it. For sure. Hey, very good, very nice, thank you. So now we're going to get to Fatima Denise and Daniel Antonio Luna. Is it possible for you, Daniel Antonio? Yes, teacher. Okay, let's do it. Okay. okay. Tim, did you hear? No one from Frank team is getting the bonus this month. Is he the man who sits next to you for lunch? Precisely. He is the advocate of theory for who thinks every single employee is lazy. Well, his team won't go to fire if he seems like that. I personally personally prefer a more paternalistic style. I am the one who makes decisions in the best interest of my team. Me too. But I hear John from sales is having a lot of success with the laces fair. The what? You know, like John, the laid back manager who takes the back seat role. Oh, I know. I hear he is the manager who lets his subordinate do whatever they want. Yeah. We may want to ask him how how he does it. Very good, perfect. Thank you. Uh let's see. Vanessa Noemi and uh, let me see Carla did it already. Osvin Alexis. Okay, I start with Jane. Okay. Team, did you hear? No one from Frank's team is getting the bonus this month. Is he the man who sits next to you for lunch? Precisely. He's the advocate of Theory X who thinks every single boy is lazy. Well, his team won't go too far if he thinks likes that. I personally prefer a more paternalistic paternal style. Um, the one who makes decision in the best interest of my team. Me too, but I hear John from sales is having a lot of success with the laces fair. The what? You know, like John, the laid back manager who takes the backseat role. Oh, I know. I heard he is the manager who lets his subordinates the 
whatever they want. Yeah, we may we may want to ask him how he does it. For sure. Okay, very good, perfect, nice. Now let's see who's missing. Uh, Sulma Janeth and Herman Alexander. I don't know if Herman did it already. No, no you didn't, right? Herman, is it possible for you? Yes, I, I can, teacher. Okay, please go ahead then. Okay. I'm Tim. Okay. Uh, Tim, did you hear no one from Frank's team is getting the bonus this month? Is he the man who sits next to you for lunch? Precisely. He, he is the adv advocate of Theory X who thinks every single employee is lazy. Well, his team won't go too far for if he thinks like that. I personally prefer a more paternalistic style. I'm the one who makes decisions in the best interest of my team. Me too, but I hear John from sales is ha is having a lot of success with the laces fair. The what? You know, like John, the laid back manager who takes the back seat goal. Oh, I know. I heard he is the manager who lets his subordinated do whatever they want yeah we may want to ask him how he does it for sure very good nice now we're going to listen to erica jasmine and kenya cecilia okay okay team did you hear no one from Frank's team is getting the bonus this month. Is he the man who sits next to you for lunch? Precisely. He is the advocate of Theory X, who thinks everything single employees is lazy. Well, his thing won't go too far in the thing like that. I personally prefer more paternalist style. I'm the one who makes decisions in the best interest of the my team. Me too, but I hear John from sales is having a lot of success with the laziest fair. That what? You know, like John, the laid back manager who takes the back seat role. Oh, I know. I hear he is the manager who lets his subordinate do whatever they want. Yeah, we we may want to ask him how to he does it. For sure. Very good. Perfect. Thank you. Uh, so we almost finished. Samantha, is it possible for you? Yes, teacher. Okay, and Manuel, are you here with us? Manuel Escamilla? Not possible. So Lucy, Natalie, could you please help Samantha? Okay, teacher, it's possible. I'm okay, done. go ahead, go ahead. <clears throat> okay. Okay, I'm Kate. Okay. Dean, uh, did you hear? No one from Frank's team is getting the bonus this month. Is he the man who sits next to you for lunch? Precisely. He is the advocate of the Theory X who thinks every single employee is lazy. Well, his team won't go too far if he thinks like if if he if he think like that. I personally prefer a more 
paternalistic style. I am the one who makes decision in the best interest of my team. Me too, but I hear John from sales is having a lot of success with the latest fair. The what? Uh, you know, like John, the laid back manager who takes the backseat role. Oh, I know. I heard he is the manager who lets his so subordinate do whatever they want. Yeah, uh, we may want to ask him how he does it. For sure. Very good. Perfect. So, uh, I guess for Lucy, Natalie is not possible, right? Hi, teacher. Ah, perfect. So let's see. You are going to be, we're going to repeat, okay? Uh, let's see. Daniel Antonio Luna, please help mm -hmm. our friend, Natalie. Dean, did you hear no one from France team is getting the Warriors this month? Is he the man who sits next to you for lunch? Risley, he is the advocate of Theory X who thinks every single employee is lazy. Well, his team won't go too far too far if the, if he thinks like that. I personally personally prefer a more paternalistic style. I am the one who makes decisions in in the best interest of my team. Me too, but I hear John from sales is having a lot of success with the lace is fair. You what? You know, like John, the laid back manager who takes the backseat role. Oh, I know. I hear he is the manager who lets his subordinate do whatever they want. Yeah, we may want to ask him how he does it. For sure. Very good, perfect. So. Uh, interesting. Let's check some words, some pronunciation, okay? Precisely. Remember that there is precisely. Advocate. Uh, let's see what else. Um, I believe only those are the ones. Let's check some vocabulary. Um, you know what is a bonus? What is bonus? Uh, fund of money, quantity of money to receive incentive, uh, an extra mm -hmm. money, extra, extra pay, extra pay. money, extra money, extra payment because of you achieving yeah. something, right? Okay, uh, you can see here that this is a clause, right? Is he the man who sits next to you for lunch? So, here, this is a good example of what we were checking before. Uh, advocate, do you know what is advocate? No teacher. Okay, advocate is like a lawyer. The difference is that the lawyer is the ones that want, they want to put people in prison. And the advocate is the defender, is the one that wants to put people out of the prison. So. Lawyers and advocates are similar, but they are not the same. Advocates, they want to put people out, and the lawyers, they want to put people inside of the prison. Okay, let's see. Lazy. What is lazy? <laughs> yeah, it's like when we are like that on Sundays afternoon, right? We don't want to do anything, we want to rest. <laughs> Uh, right, let's see what else. Uh, paternalistic, this is a word that it comes from uh, people that wants to take care of the, of the employees, right? Let's see what else. Okay, this is a, a French term that means that you can do whatever you want. That is it, okay? That is from French. And this one, the laid back manager, Laid back is something like that one. It's like a person that uh, is there watching everybody doing anything. So it would be just like that. Mm, subordinates, what is that? 
subordinates. It's the people, uh, yeah, yeah. the people, the 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 layback manager. Okay, yeah. So they are like the people that are under a manager, right? Good. Do you have any questions about this? I don't understand too much the the sentence. The laid back manager who takes the backseat row. Yeah, the laid back manager means that it's a manager that imagine that that kind of manager is the one that says, what do you want to do? Do you want this project? Do it the way that you want. So uh, you are free to go. You are free to come late or go early or whatever you want. to. So that is the idea of that kind of manager. And then he says, who takes the backseat role? It means that he's only observing. He's only watching everybody doing things, but he's not like taking care of people. It's like, whatever you want to do, do it. Okay, any other questions on this uh, conversation? Okay, so let's check the exercise here. It says match the managerial styles to their description. Compare your answers with the partner. And then it says the management style where the manager retains full control. The other one says employees are encouraged to participate and influence decision making. Managers make decisions in the best interest of their workers. Little or no direction is provided by the manager. Managers think workers are lazy and don't like to work. Managers who think staff like to work and are motivated by different factors. So what we're going to do is to try to match, okay? I'm going to give you a few minutes and then you just uh, let me know what is the answer, okay?
Okay, did you finish? So the first one, what is it? What do you think? Autocratic. Autocratic. Uh, yes, you are right. Full control definitely is autocratic. Okay, the second one, what is going to be? Democratic. 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 Very good. That is it. Democratic. Uh, the next one, what is going to be? Paternalistic. Paternalistic. Paternalistic, very good. And the next one, what is going to be? Laces fire. Laces fire, very good. And the other one? Theory G. Theory G, or yeah, Y, right? Theory Y. Last one. Very good, perfect. You are very nice on this one. Good. So let's check the grammar. How to use adjective clauses with who. So look at the examples in the boxes, then complete the exercise below. So this is the grammar that we were checking before. So we have the subject, he is the manager, then the relative pronoun, who, and then the verb or complement, things or all employees are lazy. So that is a clause, okay? He is the manager who thinks all employees are lazy. As you can see, there are two sentences, two ideas that are together with who. You put together that with who. The businessman who made decisions unilaterally, and the other one says the employee who is organizing a training. Okay, and the explanation says an adjective clause is also called a relative clause. And we have some relative pronouns. Relative pronouns refer to people, animals, and things. We are going to use the relative pronouns to provide information about someone or something. Who is used for people, okay? So Mrs. Jenkins is the job applicant who submitted a very interesting cover letter. So again, this is exactly the one that we were checking before. So we have two ideas and we put the two ideas together with who, and that is a clause. Do you have any questions about this? Questions? The pronunciation is organizing or organizing? Organizing. Organizing, okay. Yeah. Okay, no questions. So let's see if we have time for the exercise five. So we're going to, says, write sentences using the relative pronoun who. And there is like a, an example, the president, someone lead the company. So the president is, remember that you are going to use a verb there. The president is someone who leads, look at that one, leads with S, because we're speaking about he who leads the company. Okay, so I'm going to give you a few minutes for you to finish the rest of the sentences. Um, do you have any questions about the activity? Okay, I'm gonna give you a few minutes for you to fix.
Okay, did you finish or do you need more time? More time to check. <laughs> of course. Let's check a little bit more. Okay, let's check then. So the first one, or the second one, how is it gonna be? Who wants to share the second one? Premium users are people who upgrade to platinum service. Perfect, that is it. So premium users are people who upgraded to platinum services, perfect. Number three, who wants to share number three? I know the <laughs> project manager is someone who makes decisions alone. Perfect, that is it. An autocratic manager is someone who makes decisions alone. Number four, who wants to share number four? Me to share. Okay. Chaotic managers are people give total control to their subordinates. Very good. Chaotic managers are people who give total control to their subordinates. Perfect. Number five. A CEO is an important person who makes major corporate decisions. Very good. A CEO is an important person who makes major corporate decisions. Makes is very important in third person, okay? Makes. Uh, number six, the last one. Who wants to share number six? A general contractor is an employee who provides materials for labor. Perfect. A general contractor is an employee who provides materials for labor. Very nice. You see, it's very easy. It's a piece of cake. <laughs> All right, my friends. So this was the class of tonight. The question is, do you have any question? Well, here still we don't have energy in Santa Ana and it's still raining. So... I hope tomorrow you can see me because I'm with the internet from my cell phone. Anyways, we're going to check the attendance and finish the class. Holman, Saul, Giron, Sanchez. Good. Jose Alberto Baños Hernandez. Uh, Jamie Raquel Escobar Alfaro. Good. 
Present. Good. Carla Lorena Leiva Contreras. Present. Good. Vanessa Noemi Reyes Lemus. Present. Good. Héctor Francisco Morales Rico. Cristian Alexander Arevalo Delgado. Kenia Cecilia Ruiz Morán. Present. Good. Daniel Antonio Luna. Present. Good. Manuel Antonio Escamilla Jurado. Present teacher. Good. Fátima Denise Aguilar Márquez. Present teacher. Good. Iván Petrovich Guzmán Aquino. Present. Good. Lucy Natalie Juárez de Ramírez. Present. Good. Erika Jasmine Martinez Carpio. Present. Good. Samantha Marisol Campos Flamenco. Present. Good. Solma Janet Ramirez Avalos. Present. Good. Herman Alexander Duran Linares. Present teacher. Good. Nelson Antonio Errodas Rosales. Present. Good. Daniel Arquímedes Florentino García. Present. Good. Oswin Alexis Flores Hernández. I'm here. Good. David Alexander Rodríguez Sánchez. Present teacher. Very good. 101 for today is for Jose Alberto Valles. So, my friends, it was a pleasure to be here with you. Have a very good night. Rest very well. Dream in English and see you tomorrow. Okay, bye-bye. Good night, everybody. Good night, teacher. Good night. Good night. See you. Good night.